Hi, I'm William, and today we'll be looking at the chapters four to six of Sad by Neil Shusterman. Now, a brief summary of Sad. In the last video, we covered the chapters one to three and also the main themes of Sad. We saw the characters Citra and Rowan, Citra being more valued in her family and being more hot headed and reacting on instinct, while Rowan was more calculating and observant. They were both introduced to Saitham and by Saith Faraday, and they met in an opera. Now, we also looked at the settings of Saith. There was the Thunderhead, which was an all-knowing AI that controlled people. And there was Saithdom, which were a group of people that weren't controlled by Saith, by the Thunderhead, and were, they were especially chosen to take lives to balance population. Civilians could not die because death was cured, and they were bored and stagnant because of it. Let's take a look at some reoccurring themes. Corruption and justice. After, in the, in the prequel of a chapter, Scythe Carey claims that arrogant self-interest and endless fighting will always be stuck to government as long as humans were involved. Now that leads to the question, will humans always be plagued with self-interest and how do we conquer that? Second, we look, at, we look at the existence of Thunderhead. Since Thunderhead created Utopia and needed all the information to create it, we, we make the best choices if we have all the information. And also think about this. If we create a facsimile of Thunderhead, which means an exact copy, then we'll will the AI would create be also so lacking in self-interest? Conscious and self-interest. Sorry. Uh, Thunderhead is not given authority to kill because it lacks consciousness and sides can because they are human. Now, because Thunderhead lacks consciousness, it also is void of self-interest. Now, is self-interest correlated or a part of conscience? Also, we look at the 10 rules of side. There are, since sides are also humans, they will always try to, to manipulate or exploit the rules. And, and because no rules are free from loopholes, we will probably see them do that. Now, I want to ask you two questions. The first one is, why must size behave humbly? And the second is, is it possible to live free from bigotry? And is it possible for size to live, to kill free from bigotry? The second recurring theme is morale and empathy. In the, in a chapter in from four to six, a lady begs for her life because she does not want to be killed because she's 98, which was way past the normal life expectancy in real life. Are, be, are humans inherently conceited, even though they might not always show it? Now are, and also we saw how a bunch of sides had killed, had killed people on an airplane. And, and they didn't see feel any somberness while doing it. Now, do, do humans need to feel conscious to be a good person? Because we think that they're bad guys. And also, who qualifies for killing? And are sides obliged to feel somber when they are killing? Or can they actually enjoy it? Because it's basically their job. New information. Their interaction between people and sides. Now, in in the first part of the first chapter, we in chapter four, we we saw Citra saw that there were three three types of reactions and when seeing sides. First was denial, second was fleeing, third was bribing. Denial is just ignoring the sides, while fleeing is just escaping while while sides are there. Now, I find that especially interesting because do Scythe normally plan out who to kill? Because Scythe Faraday just found a, a random lady in the parking lot and, and pursued her. 
The third was bribing. How bribing can can is can if put more positively is more like giving sides free things. Now I don't think that's very effective, but because they show fear, they want to appeal to sides and make the sides happy. Now there was one outlier who was a close friend to Sai Faraday, and she understood the side, and that's why she didn't fear this fear Sai Faraday. If sides were not feared as much, or would they be discriminated too? Because because sides are generally different from normal civilians, so that leads to a question: Will humans naturally detest or fear things that we do not understand in real life? The antagonist of the book. Now, in chapter six, we finally met the bad guy. There were the elegy of sides, and they,、uh, their gleanings are especially violent, and they were also merciless. Their gleanings could also be called a massacre, but are they also a necessity? And have they done anything wrong? Because they have killed, and is the way of killing different? Is the different ways of killing better, and also should sides be enjoying killing? Some last thoughts. Oh, because this is the last video about sides, I want you to I want to leave you with some some thoughts that you can carry on while reading the rest of the book. The genre, because because setting involves utopia, doesn't mean that it is actually a utopian book. The humans' inner problems, which are self-interest, greed, and the absence of conscience, is what makes the story a, a dystopian novel. How people in the book and people in real life act differently because of, of immortality. While you read, pause and consider how how people in your life can are also similar to the people in, in the people inside. And is this an ac? Do you think this is an accurate description of the world if people are immortal? Also, take a look at the conflict. The differences of thoughts in the character Rowan and Citra are very prevalent because they are they have different upbringings and they have different personalities too. Now, look at how their personalities and thoughts affect their actions, and also take. Take good care of looking at the at, at looking at the different points of view, because because the book is in a omniscient third person view, you need to take you need to take advantage of the different thoughts that and the different and the different lenses you see in, into the story, and see how the changes in focus of characters throughout the book will affect how the story is told. Now, now, thank you very much for tuning into this lesson. I really enjoyed this making this video, and I hope you do too. Bye.